As you continue with this lecture onwards, you'll see that processes can be very complex. Our basic definition about process from last lecture is just that, basic. Before we begin defining the components of a process, let's peel back the layers of this concept known as a process. Whether physical, digital, or ideological, every process is a series of some number of steps. You can put those steps on paper in the form of instructions, often called a standard operating procedure in a formal business training or policy document or a visual diagram known as a process map. A process map uses standard shapes and connections to create a map of a process that can be understood by most employees and any Six Sigma team member. Processing time Processes all take a certain amount of time, and processing time can change with a variety of factors. Process maps and documents can only record information such as the average time a process takes or measures of variation in the processing time. This information is often noted in such documents because it provides valuable information to teams, but real-time observation of a process almost always provides better information about processing time. A retail chain might create a process map for restocking a certain area. The process documentation notes an average time of two hours to fully restock the shelves in the defined area. In an effort to obtain more data about the process, a Six Sigma team observes employees actually performing job functions in real time at various times of day for two weeks. Some notes that come from those observations include Stocking in the evening takes only minutes. Stocking during the day is hampered by the movements of customers. With just this information, you can probably see an easy way to reduce stocking time in this example, move stocking duties to non-peak times when possible. Simply understanding the steps to stock the area is not enough to understand the process. You also have to gather data about process times. Interdependencies Almost any process in a business will be dependent upon one or more other processes. Remember, the business itself is a series of linked processes all working toward the same goal or goals. Sometimes, interdependencies are noted on processes maps. Other times, interdependencies are resource-related. For example, consider a very simple passenger train scenario. The train leaves station A with passengers, carrying them to station B. Before the train can leave, the engineer must be on board and prepared to operate the machine. Safety checks, clearance from the rail yard, the closing of all the doors, these are all processes that must be completed before the train leaves the station. The process of the train transporting passengers is dependent upon the completion of other processes. When working with processes during a Six Sigma improvement project, teams must be aware of interdependencies. What does any process you are working on rely? What relies on your process? The first is important because you might need help from processes or people upstream from your process when making improvements. The second is important because you have to know how your improvements will impact downstream processes and people and improvement in the performance of your process doesn't do any good for the company or organization as a whole if it hinders the performance of a downstream process. Resources and Assignment Processes require resources. Like a motor vehicle requires fuel or electricity to run, a process requires resources such as power, people, cash, digital bandwidth, computer equipment, machinery, supplies, parts, and even skill. Since someone in an organization has to approve and pay for resources, project teams must understand the resources involved, the cost of those resources, and the owners of the processes and resources in question so they can make appropriate requests about needing additional resources.